My name is Jeff Atkinson. I'm a director of agronomy at Harold's. And what we're talking about today is balanced approach turf management. And so when you look at turf or balanced approach turf management, it's a concept that we introduced several years ago at Harold's. But we really wanted to say, hey, we've got a lot of best in class products. But when do we need to use these and for what reasons do we need to use these and how do we use them to best address the issues that a property may be having related to turf grass management. So when we look at this as different classes of products, you know, we look at plant health, we look at soil health, we look at water management, and we look at plant nutrition. And we have tools to address all of these different potential challenges on a golf course, on a lawn care setting, um, or on a sports field. But implementing for these right reasons at the right time is ultimately what we're attempting to do when we're talking about balanced approach turf grass management. So when we get into that, I wanna, what I want to do today is really break that down into three individual steps. Step one is understanding the conditions. Step two is formulating a plan. And then step three is executing the plan. So first, step one, understanding the conditions. And this is something that every turf manager should go through the exercise, whether you're new to a property or maybe you've been to a property for a while and, understand, and need to do a reevaluation of what the basic agronomic situation is on the property when you're trying to develop an agronomic management plan. And so what that looks at, just very basically, and this list could certainly go on depending on um, depending on the, the scenario, but it starts out with soil testing, water testing, looking at what the sunlight conditions may be around the property. Do we have areas that are high shade, low, low sunlight areas that are going to be challenging to grow turf in? Do we need to address those basic issues? What's the typical year in, year out disease pressure? You know, oftentimes you see similar diseases will crop up in a property in the same or similar locations. Uh, year over year, understanding what those different disease pressures may be, what the weed pressure is. So when we talk about herbicide selection, all too often we say, all right, well, I applied this pre-emergent herbicide last year. I've applied it for the last several years. Let's just go with that same option. And maybe that's not the best approach. You know, weed spectrums and weed pressure over time might change. For example, let's say that we're applying you know, Ron Star year after year because we have a high level of goosegrass pressure on a golf course. Well, maybe because we've done such a great job at managing goosegrass, now crabgrass is becoming a more of a challenge. And so we need to shift to a different pre emerged herbicide that is more effective for a crabgrass control. So understanding what your current pressures are agronomically is going to be a great first step in understanding what tools you need to implement to develop an agronomic program. You know, previously we've recorded 15 minute Fridays on soil and water testing. So if you haven't watched those, I encourage you to go back and do so. But soil and water testing is a, is a foundational way to understand, you know, what's going on beneath the soil, what's going on with the irrigation water and what challenges or issues may you need to address based off of just the chemical characteristics of those two important parts of any agronomic program. So once you have that basic information, once you have kind of the, I guess the uh, the, the guide guidelines of what you need to work within, the next step is step two is to formulate a plan. And that's really where the balanced approach programming tools come into play. And so we take those considerations again through testing and through observation, you start to say, hey, here's the issues that we may need to deal with. And so then you can take the tools that you have available to you through Heralds to address the plant health needs, to plant, to address the soil health needs, to address the water management needs or the plant nutrition needs. And certainly we've broken this graphic out into a bunch of different classes of products, but each one of these contain a set of tools that can be selected based on your specific agronomic needs. You know, there's not a one size fits all program that we can produce or frankly anyone can produce that's going to fit all agronomic scenarios because regardless of where your property is or uh, regardless of the properties that we visit as Harold's representatives, every property has a slightly unique agronomic situation. And so we have to take these tools that we have at our disposal and craft them just so that they can address those specific agronomic needs for a specific property. So with that said, we have taken the liberty to put together a few educational documents, or I should say, I guess, a few reference documents. So you can take the information, whether it's a soil test or whether it's a water test or whether it's the knowledge of the disease pressure and considering your location, that you can at least give you a document of a place to start. So what you're looking at here on your screen, this is a uh, an irrigation water suitability test, or not test, but an interpretation sheet. So you can take that water test and compare that with, a, with the values on this table. It might say, hey, 
compared to my water test, this tells me that I have high salinity water or I have high bicarbonate water. Or these are things that you might, might need to look at to address to, to manage the water source that you do have. A uh, second, we have one example of a fungicide program that we put together. And these are very extensive fungicide programs that we've created. We have several of them that are available. And I'll walk you through these a little bit more in detail. But these, pro these fungicide programs, they describe products, rates, and timing of applications to address key diseases in each turf or geographic region that we serve. And so we really split these out into a bunch of different programs. We have a Northwest and Midwest Greens program, 14 and 21 day interval fairway programs. We have a bent grass greens transition zone, a Bermuda grass program specifically for the state of Florida. We have a Bermuda grass program for the transition zone. And then finally, we have a seashore past Palum uh, program. And we made all these unique programs because we know that depending on your location and depending on your turf type, there's going to be a a unique disease spe spectrum or a unique set of disease pressures that are characteristics of those locations and of those turf types. And so when you start to look at the programs, what they look like here, and this is looking at our transition zone and fungicide and plant health program guide. On the top of the program, it's going to tell you where the location is and what types of uh, what what regional location, but also what turf type that the fungicide program is applicable for. And second, it's going to have dates throughout the season. So you look here on the kind of the the left two columns with on the on the program here, and you have months of the year and then the weeks of the year. And so this gives you kind of a good idea of when these applications should be made to address a specific disease issues. And of course, you know the transition zone for as one example is a big area. You know, we can consider the transition zone from Georgia to Virginia on the East Coast, and certainly we're going to have different climatic conditions depending on the location. And so, you know, March 10th in Georgia might be a, a great time to make the first application, but in Northern Virginia, maybe not. So you need to adjust these start dates appropriately. But when you look in here, now we have these application dates, but then you also have what key diseases on the right-hand column that these applications control. So when you look here, for example, I'm just going to look at this March 10th application of tartan stress guard at 1.5 ounces per thousand square feet and banal at two ounces per thousand square feet. When you go through here and you're looking at the different diseases, you see some X's in these boxes. Well, these X's indicate all of the diseases that these two products are labeled for control. So tartan, stress guard, and banal at two ounces here, they are labeled to control in thracnose, brown patch, dollar spot, fairy ring, leaf spot, microdochium, pythium blight, pythium root rot, summer patch, and take all patch. But then also what you may notice is that there's some of these blocks are colored yellow and others are not colored. Well, the yellow blocks indicate at what time of year that these specific diseases are most active. So tartan, stress guard, banal, they're labeled for all these diseases. But the benefit that you're really gaining here is that you are covering leaf spot, microdochium, and uh, fairy ring, because those three diseases or those three pathogens are very active in the transition zone uh, on bent grass greens this time of year in this March 10th application. And so as you go through this program, you'll see that there's a lot of products, a lot of recommended applications here. But on your specific property, this is where it comes in to say, hey, maybe I don't have these specific disease issues in my property, so I don't need to concentrate as much on microdochium applications, or maybe I don't need to concentrate as much on another disease complex. And so that's where you can start to take these applications. Maybe you remove some, maybe you add some based on understanding what the specific conditions on your property are. And finally, the applications are broken up into really three different groups. First, we have our soil systemic products. These are things like take all root rot, fairy ring, rhizoctonia diseases, our contact foliar products for products are for diseases like leaf spots and microdochium and dollar spot. And then finally, a third group of products here for pythium blight and plant health products. And then finally, there's also an indication here of watering in. Do we need to water in our fungicide application or should you leave that fungicide application on top. And what you'll typically see is a lot of our systemic products. This one here, the tartan stress guard, you know, we recommend to water that one in. But if we're looking at a more of a foliar application here, like for example, we have signature extra plus interface um, or a lot of our dacanil applications or secure applications, you'll notice that the foliar products are not recommended 
to be watered in. So the backbone of the programs, these are our systemic products here. You can see Tart and Lexicon, for example. The reason why we selected these, that these are manufacturer backed fairy ring programs. And so these are the programs that are guaranteed by the manufacturer. So if you apply these as they describe uh, to control fairy ring or another set of diseases, that the manufacturers of these products back up or guarantee the efficacy of the programs. This also ensures that when we put these together, that there was a proper rotation across classes of chemistry. So this way you are following the guidelines that are recommended by university extension agents and university researchers that suggest that we don't need to apply these fungicides on a on a, without rotating active ingredients. So through the development of our programs, we've also ensured that proper rotation uh, has been followed. But you know the the thing that really uh, the third part of this is how do we make these programs work for you? Again, it's important that we select the proper program for your situational needs, understanding which diseases are most prevalent in your location. You can adjust these applications based on your spray interval. Like I mentioned earlier, we have seven, 14, and 21 day programs, but maybe that's not your spray interval. Maybe we need to adjust these as needed to fix your 10 day interval, 20 day interval, or whatever your spray program may be. And then finally, add or remove your plant uh, your products based on disease pressure of your property. We can also incorporate other key plant protection products as needed, such as insecticides, herbicides, nematicides, or PGRs. And so that's a lot of information and something to kind of digest and something to consider by using these programs. But the final part of it, once we've developed the plan, is how do you actually go about executing the plan? And this is something that's going to be very exciting for Harold's in the in the near future and so when you look at ways to execute a program there, there's lots of ways everyone has their own way of going about it you know if that's whether that might be an excel sheet or whether that might just be a word document that's typed out or maybe that's a different type of a word document in a different format or maybe you're old school and you just handwrite everything out in long form and so all of these are effective ways to execute a program, but they each have their challenges. You know, Excel is not a great program. It wasn't necessarily built for uh, for program management. Uh, Word documents certainly also were not built for program management. There's a lot of manual entry that has to go on with Word documents or Excel documents of entering products and making sure the rates are correct and calculations are correct. A lot of opportunity for error in those types of formats. And then handwritten documents, of course, again, uh, it's it's an even more labor intensive process by making sure all your notes and rates and intervals are correct and taking the time to write all that out. And so Harold's realized that we say, well, you know, we know that the future, there's a lot of different programs that are out there today to help turf managers schedule and plan and apply the right products at the right times and, and attract an inventory and so on and so forth. But we said, you know, we really need something as heralds to provide our customers, to provide value that to uh, apply our class leading products in a way that we can best be stewards of those products. And so that's where what's exciting to announce is that Harold's has entered into a partnership with Greensight on their Turf Cloud product to build a application planning tool within their Turf Cloud infrastructure so that superintendents can uh, effectively manage their application programs, track their application programs, track their inventory, and make their process more efficient. And so if you're not uh, familiar with the, the Turf Cloud platform by Greensight, it's really unique. And you know the application planning tool is an important part of Turf Cloud, but it is just that, it's just a part of Turf Cloud. And so when you sign up for Turf Cloud, what's really neat about Turf Cloud, first off, is that it's a free platform for you to use is that not only does it have the application planning tools available to you, but you also have a job board, you have labor tracking reports, you have budgeting and planning tools that are built into it. And then you also have autonomous mower and drone mapping and course visualization opportunities um, that you can partner with Turf Cloud or Greensight on to implement into the Turf Cloud. And so some really neat tools that I encourage you to sign on, create an account. I have a link at the end of the presentation for you to, um, to sign up for your Turf Cloud account so that you can start to look and see what this whole interface is about. 
So looking at some of our different tools that we do have with the Turf Cloud and Herald's partnership is that we do have inventory tracking built into the program and an application programming and pro planning and program builder. So as you go to build your program, you can look and cross-reference and say, hey, do I have enough of product X, Y, or Z to make this application actually happen? So with the inventory tracking, you can add your own products. We'll also have a default set of lists of common products associated with your region that are preloaded into, um, in, into your account. You can import your own product list, organize your own inventory quantities. You can track costs over time improving your operational efficiencies while also making more informed uh, purchase decisions as you build your own database. These are, uh, you can build custom programs. You know, we're also working to grow a library of Herald's developed agronomic programs, similar to what we were just going through with the fungicide programs, but you can tweak these as needed to suit your specific agronomic needs. Once you have these programs in place, once you have your areas loaded within the program, there's mix sheets that will be available to you with a click of a button. So you can hand those to your applicators, or if you are the applicators, you can print those off and you can uh, follow those mix sheets with your spray tank equipment. And all that can be customized based on the equipment that you have available to you. And this is also an opportunity for seamless collaboration between yourself, and your Herald's representative. So after you create an account for your property, after you create an account for yourself, you build a program, you can actually share the ability to view your program with your Herald's representative. So your Herald's rep could go in there and look at your application program and say, hey, yep, it looks great. Or they might have some comments for you. They might say, hey, looks like a good program, but maybe you need to be covered on this disease a little bit stronger during this period based on the historical knowledge of a given area. And so some really neat tools for enhancing operational efficiencies, but also a neat opportunity to enhance the relationship and collaboration between you and your Herald's representative. And so just to wrap up, the QR code there on the left, if you scan the QR code, that's going to take you to the Herald's Turf Cloud login or, or account creation interface and so that's the first way to get started very intuitive program been very impressed with turf cloud and their ability to create an intuitive program for users and herald's representatives to use and collaborate and so appreciate your time and we'll see you next time on 15 minute friday